Good morning, everyone. How is everyone doing today? It's the day after Independence Day, and uh, we had uh, a kind of an kind of a weird day yesterday, but we actually kind of celebrated the Fourth of July on Sunday. Um, our son is visiting us. Uh, he goes to school up in Canada, but he's on his uh, co-op work term. And because he goes to a Canadian school, uh, he had Canada Day off, which was Friday, but he didn't have Independence Day off. So we actually uh, worked yesterday. And um, on Sunday, we went up to Algonquit, Maine, and uh, it was our first time there. It was a cute little village, like with gift shops, and you can take uh, boating excursions, and there's a really nice uh, walkway along the cliff there and then we went for um, a short hike and then we went to the top of a mountain with a beautiful vista it was just really beautiful and um, my husband's birthday is also uh, on the fourth so we got to kind of celebrate um, all of that together so it was a nice little day trip that we were able to take and um, just due to circumstance with our, our son's work schedule because the different holidays they didn't line up this time but it worked out well and it's so nice to have him here right now uh, with us he's going to be spending the next two weeks with us so it's just been really nice to have him uh, home for a little bit so I hope you all did something fun for the holiday or um, enjoyed the outdoor weather um, so Anyway, let's dig into today's card. It is Casing Tuesday, and that's the day when we take a card out of uh, Stampin' Up! catalog and we give it a makeover. And we invite all of you to come join us on our Facebook group. You can share your card or you can see everyone else's cards. What have they done with the card and how have they changed it or how have they made it the same? It's kind of a neat exercise. And it, it's a... It, this this is good for beginners and it's good for people that have been stamping a long time. It Everyone can enjoy it at whatever level and we invite you to join us. Okay, let's have a look at today's card. And here it is. It's a square card. Now I took my square card and changed it into a rectangular card. You can definitely do that as well. But if you want to give this square card a try, we have the measurements for you. It's a nice simple card and it's nice coming off a holiday to have kind of an easy card to work with. Um, the thank you is stamped on the rectangular stamp um, punch. So um, if you have that punch, you could use that. I didn't use that, but you can make adjustments and that's the fun part. How are you going to adjust the original card to make it your own? So here is the sketch. Oh, I lied. Here is the sketch. Here it is. <laughs> so uh, that will give you the measurements. The card is a four and a quarter by four and a quarter inch card. Um, now, if I was going to make this card and um, send it in an envelope, you could put it in a regular medium size Stampin' Up! envelope because the four and a quarter inch length will fit inside um, that. So that would be the easiest fix. Or you can make it a square envelope for it, but you're going to have to make it a little bit larger. I can't remember what the minimum length um, or the minimum size for a square envelope is. So you'll have to look that up for whatever country you're in. Um, I know, I think it's at least five inches by five inches, but I think it could actually be a little bit larger than that. So make sure your envelope is large enough to mail if you're planning on mailing it. Okay, let me get rid of this. Now, hello to everyone who's joining me. If you have any questions or have anything along the way, please post them in the comments and I will um, check everything out afterwards. Okay, I'm going to switch over to my other camera so I can share my card with you. Okay, here it is. <laughs> you might think, ah, oh, she did a dog card and you know what? I love I love dogs, so um, I had to use, this is the um, dog from the Christmas Scotty bundle, and but I didn't want to make it a Christmas card. I'm Okay, I will start making Christmas cards soon, interspersed a little bit, um, but I, it's summer. I just, 
I, I just can't wrap my head around Christmas yet for the main card. But I actually will change the Scotty into a Christmas card in just a moment. I'm going to make a Christmas version of this card using the same layout. But isn't this cute? He's just so adorable. Um, and you can make him into a spring Scotty or a summer Scotty. So just very, um, very easy card. Now, you'll probably remember the card and it had the rectangular look, right? And it had this piece sitting up and there was an extra layer that I deleted because I didn't really feel like it, it needed it. So you can definitely do what whatever you want with it. So I did turn it on its side, the sketch as well. So this is how my card turned out. So just think about all the different possibilities that you can do with your card. Okay, let's talk about this bundle here. I'm gonna scoot this out of the way for a second. Okay, so this is the Christmas Scotty bundle and it comes with the stamp set and it comes with a punch it's reflecting weirdly right now, but the um, punch has the Scotty and it has a um, bow on it. So you can do different things with that. I think you would definitely, uh, the punch is cute, but if you want the eye, you definitely need this um, stamp set to go with it as well. And you'll want it just because it says, may your days be furry and bright. That's really cute. I love that. Okay. So let's create a card. Let's do two cards at once because I want to do, I wanted to do two different cards, um, oh, kind of one in spring and one in, in summer. Okay, so we're going to take some card bases and this is just Parakeet Party cardstock. It measures eight and a half by five and a half and I scored it in half at the four and a quarter inch mark. I'm just going to use the bone folder to help it lay flat. Okay, and then I use the Tea Boutique paper. And the Tea Boutique paper, yes, it does have teacups on one side, but guess what? It does have different colors on the other side, like teacups. So um, the Tea Boutique paper is versatile. So um, if you have some and you don't have Christmas paper yet, I, for some reason, I did the pre order for Stampin' Up products and I guess I just must not have been in a Christmassy mood because I did not order any Christmas paper at all. So I was like, huh, how do I make this little Scotty dog pop? And yeah, so I went to the Tea Boutique paper and I pulled some out just so we could see what we could make. So I've got um, two little strips of the paper that measure one and a half by five inches. So we'll just kind of lay those there for a moment. And then we're going to take um, a rectangle. We're going to do two of these. And these measure two and three quarter inches by two inches. I think one of them looks bigger, but they're the same size. I'm going to take a little scrap piece of paper. And I'm going to take this. This is, let me clean this off. It's got a little black fleck in the center. Okay, it's clean now. So this is... Um, I would call this the plaid stamp. And I'm going to take Parakeet Party. And it doesn't quite fit. I, I need a little extra length. So I'm going to just ink this up. And I'm going to find a line to kind of just aim for. Kind of see and then just stamp it down. I'm going to lining up the edge of my cardstock with that line. So I've got my first stamp and now I'm going to just do the same thing. I'm going to kind of line up and this isn't going to be a hundred percent perfect. So you can see I've got a little bit if you look closely, you can see it's not 100% perfect, but it's close enough. And that's all I care about because I'm going to stick a Scotty dog on top of it. That's going to cover everything up. So I'm just going to take this and do this again. So just line it up. You may need to practice this on some scrap paper. I did too, just to kind of get an eye feel for the stamp and 
just to see how it goes. If you, it might be a little easier if you take a piece of black cardstock and put it in your background because then you can really see the edges very well. Um, I'm gonna grab a piece to show you. Okay, I just have a small piece of black here. I wish I had a, a bit a bigger piece to show you, but okay, so can you see now where you can see the edges? I would probably cut myself a little bit larger of piece, but I didn't wanna have to go cut a piece of cardstock. I just had a little scrap there. So let's use that little scrap, and now we can see the edges just a little bit better. And, yeah. and the cool thing about stamping on the black is like it barely, barely shows up. You can see a shadow on there, so you can just keep reusing that piece for stamping purposes. Okay, so let's move that out of the way this out of the way so for this card I'm gonna put this, this is gonna be our Christmas card and then this one's gonna be more of a summary card so for our summary card I want to emboss the greeting on here so let's just kind of set this up what I want to do is I want to figure out where I want my two pieces to go. I want this one down just a little bit more. And I wanna use this as a guide for when I'm stamping my greeting. So I'm gonna take Versamark. Now, oh, we now have um, an embossing kit that you can buy that has an embossing buddy in it. So I'm gonna use that and I'm going to stamp with Versamark. So that just keeps the stray flex from sticking. And I'm going to stamp You Are So Loved in Versamark. And I'm going to remove those. Grab my white embossing powder, which I have dumped into this little container. Sprinkle the embossing powder on top. And Half off the excess and then we'll come in with the heat tool oops I'm hitting things here and um, your embossing will change color you can kind of see once it's melted. Okay. So sometimes when I'm embossing, my cardstock will go a little wonky. So sometimes I heat on the back side too and it helps flatten it out again. All right. Okay, so I've got that embossed. And now I'm going to lay this down. Now for this other card, I think I actually want to stamp a darker colored greeting. So we're going to do that one afterwards. Well, actually, let's do it now. Because, you know, the thing is, if you lay these pieces down and you make a mistake on the card base, um, you can cut yourself a new card base and then you haven't glued everything down and you don't have to do these pieces again. So... So one of the tricks that I did with my little Scotty dog is I actually stamped him in Knight of Navy. Yes, that black dog, it looks black. He stamped a Knight of Navy. Um, and the reason for that is it's very hard to get a really good black image with um, on a bold stamp with your Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And the reason why is because Memento ink, it's a really good ink for black, but it's a linen pad. I don't know if you can see the surface. You can see a string hanging off the edge there. That's It's a linen pad. It's a a woven cover and that's what traditional ink pads were 
and Stampin' Up! a few years ago changed their ink pads to foam and that allows for a better inking of the stamp. So these ones are from foam, um, but we don't have a black ink in the um, classic line. So um, I'm going to use Knight of Navy. It's probably our darkest ink that we have. Um, so just look for, for our dark ink and you can trick your eye into believing it's, it's black. It's actually a really dark Knight of Navy. So um, therefore, I'm also going to use Knight of Navy to stamp my greeting. And I'm going to use May Your Days Be Furry and Bright because that is such a cute greeting. And I neglected to put this on a block earlier. So normally, I also do this weird thing where I don't tend to put my um, greetings on the block like this if they max out the edges. What I do is I tend to put them on the block like this because this way I can see a lot better if I'm straight or not. Um, for some reason, when I don't know why, but when it's on an angle, it's just easier for me to stamp. So I just want to arrange my pieces on here how I want them. And seeing as I'm kind of doing this as a set, I'm going to try and keep the levels the same. Open up my Knight of Navy. May your days be furry and bright. I just want to sing that song, but I know I'm going to slaughter it with my voice. Okay, see? Doesn't that look black? It looks black to me. Okay, so this one is going to be dark and these, the, these ones are going to be lighter. Okay, so now we're going to, we're going to do the Scotty dog. Actually, let's adhere these pieces down so that they're down and not shifting around. Now that I know that I got them stamped right, let's do that quickly. That way I won't have to rearrange them like few more times. Okay. I love I love how I'm using this tea boutique paper. No one will know that this is full on teacups on the back side, right? No one tell. They're doing that with more papers now, um, using the the back side and making it a neutral which I really love. I love having neutrals on the back side because I do end up using the neutrals pattern probably more than I even use the, the pattern pattern paper. Okay, just adding that. So with these designer series paper, these strips here, I, the same distance I'm really placing it on the top, the bottom and the side, it's kind of equal distance. And then this piece, I'm just trying to get it up above, trying to get it up above this greeting here. Also, if you're making a card set, you want to kind of keep them uniform. Okay. All right, so let's set these aside and let's bring in our Scotty dog, our Knight of Navy ink pad. I've cut a strip of basic white cardstock, just the regular one, not the thick, because the regular one has a smooth finish on it. And the width here is two inches. And you want to grab the right Scotty dog. So it's this guy right here that is flat. This one is one that's kind of standing up so you can perch him onto something like a gift. You could turn this into a gift. And um, so this Scotty dog is standing up and then this one's looking back. So you want this one. And here's the punch. So you wanna make sure when you're stamping this, that you've got good coverage and give it a good stamp. 
Now, if you find that you're not getting a good stamping when you're inking this up, um, make sure if, if it's missing ink, um, sometimes it's too inky and sometimes it's um, not inky enough. So make sure you have a refill on standby if you need it. Um, the other thing you can do is you could pop this onto your stamparatus and um, then you could repeat stamp if you needed to. But look how dark that is. It's just, it's pretty dark. So I'm, I'm loving how, how dark that is. So let's uh, stamp this guy one more time. Tap, tap, tap. Don't smush it down too far. And then we'll stamp him one more time. And I think I'm gonna do, I'm trying to decide. Ooh, look how crisp that is. So on this guy, I think I'm going to do a pink color since I have Melon Mambo out. And this Melon Mambo color could almost pass for red. So let's do Melon Mambo on this one for a collar. And then on the other one, let's do a different color. So let's just take this, this is the little collar. And I'm just gonna line this up. And if there's like a white spot, you could theoretically come in and just shift it a little bit and stamp it again and, and grab that, that if there's, if you don't stamp it 100%, you can come in and stamp it again because the dark skin or the dark fur <laughs> of the Scotty is going to obscure that. So let me clean off my pink and let's do, we're gonna do a purple. So I think I'm gonna do Orchid Oasis for my other one. And let's just add this onto here. Ooh, that's so pretty. And I'm just gonna, there we go. So look at that, two different um, collars. And let's close these up. Don't tell anyone these dogs are Knight of Navy, okay? <laughs> You can't tell. Native Navy is a very dark in color. It's so dark it's almost black. Okay. Punch that. I found this bow. I find it just a little large for the dog. So I I thought not for this one. Um I just decided that I, I I wanted it to be a little smaller. Okay, so they're my little dogs. And we'll come in and purple here and red here. And then we're gonna take some dimensionals. Okay, put three dimensionals on the back. One supporting the head and two supporting the bodies. Okay, pop that back in there. Okay, and then I'll just stick this little Scotty dog on there. Just kind of find the sweet spot where it's kind of centered. He's he cute. Oh my gosh. He's adorable. I'm glad I did one with the purple because now we can kind of see different colors. And let's add this one onto here. Okay. And then we need, we're going to take the smallest jewel. These are glossy dots. They're just really bright. And you can kind of trick your eye into thinking this is a reddish color um, just because this is a, such a big red piece. 
And then this one right here, we'll add a little dot down here. Looks like he, he or she has a bejeweled collar. Let's pop that away. All right. Let's pop some of these things away so we can take a look at our cards. So this one here I did in uh, a, a Tahitian Tide card base. And then these two are Parakeet Party. Let's do this we can kind of see the difference. You can kind of see how the different um, dogs look and you can take it, you know, this is like a, you know, a Christmas card and um, maybe you could also put the bow on this one because the bow might make it look a little bit more Christmassy. Um, but, you know, for these two, you, you know, they can be like an any time of year card. You know, you don't have to make them um, just for Christmas. Um, that's probably why I got this bundle as one of my first bundles because it could be used at other times of the year. Um, and you know, even though we do Christmas in July sometimes, <laughs> I don't feel like having Christmas in July. No, no, I do not. I, I just, I, I want summer in July. We, we have enough time for winter and Christmas. And uh, so I wanted to do something a little different. So I don't know, which card do you like the best? Um, do you like um, the Christmas one? Do you like the um, Tahitian Tide one? Do you like the Parakeet Party one? Um, I don't know which one I like the best. I don't know. The original one has like a lot of color in it because I chose colorful patterned paper. But this one's nice and bold here with the um, the pattern. So yeah, so those are my cards for today. Let me pop back over. Hello, hello. And I want to let you know that all the supplies I use today, they are available on my blog. If you click over to my um, link down below. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube later on, because that's where I'm going to load this up next, um, you'll have to click on the show more button. I don't know what the um, thing on Facebook is. It might be see more. Um, sometimes you have to expand um, the section to see all the text that I wrote. Um, so I actually have all the supplies listed down in the description of the video. But if you want a better feel for what the supplies actually are, rather than just a text, click over to my blog because then I have a photo supply list rather than just a text supply list. And um, so, and if you order from me this month, and I, did I pop up the host code? No, I have not popped up the new host code yet. Okay, let me grab that um, real quick. So this month um, I have a new host code and I'm just gonna grab that. Every month when things change over, it always takes me a while to change everything over on all the different parts. So, okay, I copied that. Now I'm coming over here. I'm going to visualize my host code. Don't use that host code. Let me edit this. We're gonna use this host code. Um, let's see how quickly I can uh, work this out. There we go. That's the correct host code, except it says June. It should be July. Okay. All right, and now it's changed. Let's change this to a different color. See, I can play all day with colors and change things around. There we go. There's my July host code. And um, so this month, um, that's so weird. I just, oh, okay. I could have sworn that I added, maybe I added things to the other section. Um, so I gave away all of my little embellishments. I'm going to get some on my latest order and I'll show you what you're getting if you place a $50 or more order. It's these fun resin shapes. There we go. 
I'm popping them up there. So those are um, the rewards um, for for this month, for the month of July. And also the cool thing is um, that if you spend 50 or $100 or a combination of thereof, like say you spend $200, then um, you can choose something for every $50 increment or for every $100 increment. So you can use a hundred dollar reward. Um, there are hundred hundred dollar rewards and fifty dollar rewards that you can get from Stampin' Up. And um, so, uh, just remember to kind of order in increments of fifty or a hundred. Don't order ninety nine dollars worth of product because, well, you could, but if you spent one more dollar, then you could get you know, a hundred dollar reward or two fifty dollar rewards. So just keep in mind where where you're at. And also um, if you spend at least 50, you're also gonna get these fun resin shapes, um, fun flower resin shapes from me at the end of um in August. Okay, um let me go and check out and see say hello to all of you and uh, find out if you have any questions for me. Good morning, Marty and Betty and Kimberly Ann and Amy and Janine and Dee and Alita and Andre, all from Quebec. That's nice. Um, Betty says she loves that tip of stamping the dog a night of navy. Trust me, this is going to save you a lot. Where, where's my... Where is my dog that I stamped earlier? Okay, so, you know, and you could probably get, like if you use the Stamparatus and you stamped a few times, you could probably get the, the dog really black. But honestly, like, doesn't that look like a black dog to you? Like, that looks black to me. So why not use Knight of Navy? I think it will save you a lot of time. And if you don't want to pull out your Stamparatus and you just want to use a D block, it's going to be a lot quicker. So um, that tip is, is definitely helped me. So good morning, Ellie. Um, Janine said she was going to suggest the Stamparatus. I routinely use it for large area stamps. Yes, uh, Stamparatus is a wonderful tool. I, I love it, but sometimes if you just want to stamp something quickly and then punch it out, you know, um, there's there's an alternative for you. You can do whatever you want. Dee likes the cards and she loves Scotty dogs. I love Scotty dogs too. We used to have um, a neighbor um, back when we lived in Tennessee and they had a white Scotty, not a Westie, it was a Scotty named Dudley. And um, Dudley was our, our friend uh, next door, was our dog Bella. We had a Sheltie. They were all friends in the neighborhood and um, very, just a very sweet dog. Scotties are, are nice dogs. Um, Good morning, Yasmin. Nice to have you here. Janine likes the cute little dog and card. Jasmine likes the card too. Ah, Janine said, so I'm guessing you're not watching the Hallmark Christmas movies this month. No, I, you know what? Uh, it's not that I mind Hallmark Christmas movies. I'm just like, just, just want to be warm and I don't want to see snow. <laughs> I yeah also I have I I don't watch a lot of TV I'll admit I okay there there's two times I watch TV a day um, one um, in the afternoon I go for a walk on the treadmill and I watch usually I watch a little bit of news and because um, that's what the channel is on when I get on the treadmill and then I watch um, Netflix I, I watch I usually pick a series on Netflix and I just like just keep watching it all the way through um, and then after dinner um, my husband and I we usually have like a series that we're we're watching another like usually like a short series like for 20 minutes or whatever like a comedy or something and we just watch that and we usually have a cup of tea um, and just watch it. So I don't watch a ton, ton of TV. Um, in my craft room, I listen to audiobooks um, because I don't want to have to watch anything. So um, I, I love, 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 love audiobooks. They are just like the best thing ever. Um, so 
yeah, that that is that is what I do. But I can't listen to audiobooks all the time. It's just when uh, if I have to make fifty thank you cards in a row, um, the it's very repetitive, so you, it doesn't require a lot of thought. It's fun, but it's just like it's nice to have something else on in the background. An audiobook is awesome. So now you know too much about my life. My too much about my. Uh, uh, kind of uh, mundane life, but it's it's a good life. Um, so, okay. Um, Betty says, all three cards are cute. Can't pick out just one favorite. Oh, that's great. Marty likes the Tahitian Thai card. I love blue. I also love the designer paper on that card. Yes, the, the floral paper. This one, I can't remember what was on the back side of this paper, but um, I thought it looked nice with the um, parakeet party ink on, on the background. So it just kind of, this this card really reminds me of summer because it's got flowers and Scotties don't just have to um, promote Christmas products. They can, um, or, or Christmas, they can promote summer too. Um, you know, think about this. You can make this really easily into a happy birthday card too, right? Just ch change out. There isn't a birthday greeting in this um, stamp set, but pick one from another set or from a greeting set and add happy birthday to it. And it can be a summer birthday card as well. Or have you are so loved on the, um, you are always loved on the outside and put happy birthday on the inside. So you could do that too. Um... Good morning, Linda from New York. Um, Dee likes the Tahitian Tide one also, but Christmas colors. One is nice too. Great. Oh, Marty, you didn't know Scotties could come in white? Yeah, yeah, they can come in white. Yeah, like um, sometimes you'll see black and white Scotty dogs. The only bad thing I, I see with um, doing a white Scotty dog um, is that you would probably have to emboss it on black. So it, white and black um, dogs together like that are always hard. It's, it's like the wedding color problem. Like sometimes, you know, um, uh, men are in, in dark suits or in a black suit and like the groom, groom and then the bride is in white. And it's sometimes it's hard to photograph. Well, it's also hard to put Bl starkly black and white things on a card um it would be hard 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 to do so i'm not impossible but hard to do a black and white on the same card but um i would suggest either doing all white you could emboss you know a white scotty if you wanted to do that but yeah marty says do you watch stranger things leo and i watched the last three episodes yesterday yes Yes, yes, I am watching Stranger Things. I am a little bit of a sci-fi fantasy person. I love, I don't know, like way back, I loved Lord of the Rings and Chronicles of Narnia. Um, I love Outlander. Um, well, so with Stranger Things, I had all watched the first three seasons by myself because I wasn't sure if my husband would like it. But by the time I got to the end of the third season, I thought, yeah, he probably would like it. And so when the fourth season came up, I was going to watch it alone, but then I thought maybe he'd want to watch it with me. So I went back and we rewatched all three seasons. And now we just started on season four. So don't tell me what happens. And we decided not to watch it while our son was here because he hasn't watched the other seasons. So now I'm on pause for two weeks. <laughs> can't even stand it. I'm on pause for two weeks while we uh, wait. Um, um, once he's gone, we'll, we'll finish watching Stranger Things. But I, I do do like it. Season four is a little different, though, um, the start of it. So um, I, I love the first three seasons, waiting to see what season four brings. Just non-stamping today. But yes, you get me started on topics, and I will take off on a tangent. Um, Nalita says she loves audiobooks too. Love them. Yep, they're awesome. Um, Linda Lee loves Scotty dogs. Yeah, they're so cute. Um, oh, Dee loves the Scotty dogs in the red and red plaids. Yes, they they are really. You know what? I actually do think I have. Now that I think of it, I got that paper. Let me grab it. Oh, I got this paper. I haven't even cracked it open yet. 
this paper, the big gingham cottage paper. So I probably could have pulled paper from here. I, I don't know. I, to be fair, I was making this card yesterday and my brain wasn't quite, <laughs> quite with it, I think. And I, I, I wasn't thinking about this paper, um, but this paper, let me pop this over here. Did I lose my, oh, oh, here we go. Okay, this paper, this is a big paper pack. It's a 12 by 12 gingham cottage and it's got, I think it's got 48 sheets. It's it's a lot of paper. So, um, so it's got different patterns. I haven't even looked at all of these. So, this probably paper would have probably worked yesterday. So it's got kind of big um, gingham on one side and smaller gingham on the other side. It's got all different colors. You can this would be good for Halloween, huh? So um, it's big neutral paper. Wow. And we've got some green, which would um, work well as background paper. Now, some people might think this paper is like, maybe it's a little um, a black and orange, which would be good for Halloween again. I might think this paper is a little boring, but honestly, I'll tell you something about stamping. Um, sometimes we need boring paper, like not boring paper, but paper that has neutral patterns, like like these two, to um, because we're gonna stamp an image. We sometimes don't want the paper to take over the card. Um, but then this paper here is is really beautiful too. It just depends how you lay things out. So I probably could have used this paper, but it's not overtly Christmas either. So I really didn't even think about it yesterday. But I hadn't even cracked that paper open yet, and and that one um, I probably could have used. Um, okay, you just sent me off on a tangent. Um, I, I was thinking that one's gingham, but gingham and plaid, they're all kind of patterns. So I was thinking of that one. Uh, Marty says, um, uh, that the fun, uh, Stranger Things Marathon. Yeah, it takes us a while to get through because the, the episodes are so long on Stranger Things. So sometimes we only watch half an episode a night. It does take us a long time to get through. Um, Betty said um, she did Christmas Scotties with the Gingham Cottage. Oh, that's awesome. I used the Garden Green and Real Red. Oh, perfect. Yes, yes, that would work. Oh, I'm glad you did that. I'll have to try that later on. Still not in the Christmas mood. Um, uh, Ellie says she loves that big paper pack. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much for joining me this morning. I hope you love the little Scotty dog. He's so, so cute. And don't think about him just for Christmas because you can do different times of year. Lots of people love cute little animals. So, um, you know, um, that could be, could, could be for grown-ups, for kids. So um, very versatile um, stamp set and punch. Okay, I will be back here on Friday with another video for you at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I go live on YouTube, um, so I hope to see some of you there. It will either be a 3D or a fancy full card. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but it will be good, and I'll see you then. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.